Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of Seeing Beyond and Through with Monty. Well, just three weeks ago, the U.S. Open was held, and it was a bit of a surprise because we had two newcomers who no one even predicted would probably make it past the first round. But they made it all the way past the first round. And one of them actually made it through qualifying to go ahead and win the whole thing. This is 19-year-old Leila Fernandez of Canada. You know, it was very refreshing to see new faces there. And um, it's very exciting for women's tennis. The eventual winner and champion is 18-year-old Emma Raducanu, a UK citizen. Now, this took everyone by surprise because she made it all the way through the qualifying rounds. And as these two were playing, there was one person who people just didn't really think of who was not really missed. Now, before I go on, this may seem a bit insensitive or a bit mean-spirited, but in no way is it intended for that. It's not a hit piece. However, I will tell you things in which I have noticed. And the one person who wasn't missed was Naomi Osaka. Now, before I go on, I want to say this. One of my tennis buddies is the most die-hard Naomi Osaka fan. He just loves her. He's been rooting for her all the tournaments that she's been in. He just does not want anyone saying one bad thing about her. He thinks some of the criticism that I direct directs at her is very mean-spirited, but he's mistaken. Now, I'm saying that she was not missed because I think that people are getting a little tired of her antics. And if my friend was a little honest, he's getting a little bit leery of it, of it too. It's kind of wearing people down. And what it seems with Naomi Osaka, it just seems like to me, in every tournament here recently, since 2018, it's just been drama after drama after drama. Now, I will agree that mental illness is real. It's something that should not be taken lightly. It's something that should not be just brushed over. It's something that you shouldn't tell people to just be stronger. No. However, let me say one thing here. That's when it's really mental illness. Sometimes with Naomi, I, I do believe that it's there, but I do believe also that people can use that as a crutch, and they can use that to deflect criticism. I don't think it's really her, per se. I do believe that it's people on her team. At the French Open, when she did not get her way, when she thought that they were just going to bow down and allow her to not do press conferences, I think they needed a way out. And I think they used the mental illness route as that particular way out. Because her sister, Mari, said, if you can remember, that it's not really mental illness in the traditional sense. It's just that she was lacking confidence and she didn't want people to bring that into her head. So in some way, she comes across to me as a person, if they do not get their way, they throw a temper tantrum. And I do believe that people eventually are going to be worn down by this, whether it's mental illness or not. They're going to want to move on. If you have mental illness Okay, it's going to be like, okay, deal with it, but deal with it over there. Now, we all know about her on-coint dramatics with Serena. 
I do blame Serena, a big part of this right here, for throwing that temper tantrum that just did not need to really happen. It's really a shame that she kind of ruined um, the tournament for Naomi. If Naomi was that fragile, it just spiraled her into a situation that she should not have been in or been involved in. But ever since then, it's just been this whole drama with this girl. Drama that is just wearing on people. I know that if my friend who's a diehard fan is getting a little bit tired of this right here, getting a little bit taxed out by this, many people are. And I have heard from a lot of people. And what's going to happen, what's going to happen is, is that people are just going to move on. Many people are not going to want to admit that in that particular final with the two teenagers, Naomi Osaka just was not missed. It was very refreshing not to see her there. Because as I've stated, it just wherever she goes, drama goes. And I'm going to blame part of her team. I blame her team for this, for putting her into a very bad situation. I don't necessarily blame her parents because Naomi Osaka is 23. But this whole thing about her having 50, what is that, 50 contracts? 50, um, what is this, uh, sports deals that she's pushing. Sponsorships is what a word which I want to use. That's way too many. That is just way too many for someone who is just not built for that. And when I say built for that, let me tell you what I mean. Follow me here. The tale of two first ladies. This is first lady, or former first lady, Melania Trump. We all know that Melania Trump was a very reluctant first lady who just did not really want to be first lady. Melania Trump is very private. She's shy. She's reserved. She's an uh, introvert. Not really one built for a worldwide stage. Contrast that with Michelle Obama, who's very outgoing, very articulate, robust, confident. She doesn't mind the limelight. She's more built for that particular worldwide stage. Naomi Osaka is an introvert. She's very quiet. She's shy. She's very private. She's reserved. So therefore, putting her out there to constantly make appearances, to be a spokesperson for 50 plus sponsors, in my opinion, is not doing her any good. At one point, you have to ask yourself, what type of a toll is this taken on her mentally when you're forcing someone to be who they're not? Why not just break this down to, okay, let's give her 10 to 15 sponsors. That way, less public ex uh, exposure, less public speaking, less public engaging that she would have to do. Because I truly believe that you're forcing her to do something that she's not really comfortable doing. We all know that she's socially awkward. We all know that that is just not really her thing. But yet she has all these engagements and these sponsors that she must, she must be there for them. She must work for them. She has to speak up on their behalf now because she signed the dotted line. So I'm going to question her team for this right here. I mean, yes, yeah, she's the highest paid athlete, female athlete right now. But at what toll is that really taking on her? Is it really worth it? In my opinion, it's not. And part of her problem are the people she have managing her. I would say it was her parents, but not her parents though, because Naomi Osaka is 23 years old. It's her management people. I mean, it's almost like they're just um, putting her out there to dry, really. They're having her do things for money. She gets paid, they get paid. But wouldn't it be a lot better as opposed to making, let's say, 
fifty million dollars a year, just be happy with twenty. I mean, that's more than ninety nine percent of the world would ever have. So this whole tale of being greed, being very greedy, is taking their toll. Look at what it's doing to her. She has really a messed up management team. I mean, they should really be ashamed of themselves at what they're doing. And what's going to happen, what's going to happen eventually, and what's happening right now, is that as opposed to having people sympathize with her, they're going to run the risk of having people turn away from her. They're not going to turn on her. They would turn away from her. And what's going to happen is that people are going to remember all of this right here. I remembered it. They're going to remember it. All this drama, all this crying, all this outburst, whatever it is, they're not going to want to deal with it. And people don't have to deal with it. Because when we turn into sports, we turn into sports for an escape for the way the world is right now. We turn into sports to get lost, to get away from our problems. We turn into sports to be entertained. No one wants to turn into watching somebody crying, boo-hooing, talking about their depression, talking about their mental illness. We want to escape. We want to be entertained. We do not want to deal with this. And granted that she does have mental illness, I would say that she is prone to depression. But guess what? People are going to say, okay, go off and deal with it. Leave us out of it. We don't want to see it on the court. And you know what? That's not too much to ask for. People are going to turn off from her and turn on to her. I predict that she, with one more Grand Slam, she's going to easily overtake Naomi Osaka as being the highest paid female athlete. And the reason why, she's fun, she's bubbly, she's engaging, she's happy. I mean, all of those things that Naomi is not, she is. She just has a spark of life about her. She's the type of an athlete that when you watch, you're watching her perform. You're not watching her problems. You don't have to worry about someone breaking down. And this is the reason why, this, one of the reasons why this match was so enjoyable. We were able to watch two young ladies battle it out. We were able to tune in to what sports should be about. Give us the escape. Give us the lightheartedness. Give us the entertainment. Give us the athleticism. We do not want to be bogged down with your mental problems. And thank God that they gave us this. It was none of the drama that can be so pervasive in women's tennis. So... I'm saying all that not to be insensitive, and I'm sure that some of you may have taken it that way. Some of you Naomi Osaka fans may not like that, but that's your problem. It's not a hit piece. I'm just giving you my honest perspective. And that's all I can do. So I wish these two right here many more battles in the future. It's going to be great to see, I mean, this 18-year-old, 19-year-old, Corey Guff coming up. It's going to be a wonderful time to watch women's tennis. It really is. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, that is another edition of Sam Beyond and Through with Monty. And I will see you all beyond and through.